So good morning, afternoon or evening everybody and welcome to another Photo Creative Challenge. Really great to see so many of you all here and thank you so much for those donations you've just put in there. You guys rock, you're supporting the Photo Creative Group and helping to keep these challenges going. Um, what was I going to say? There's something else I needed to say but it's slipped right out of my mind. Photo Creative Challenges are monthly challenges set by me for photographers just like you to go and practice your skills. This month's challenge was the birds challenge in memory of a lovely guy called Paul Tyzak. Now everybody has completely surprised me this month because to be honest I didn't think so many of you would get stuck into photographing birds so well done everybody you guys completely rock with that one. Uh, completely astonishing and it's lovely to see you all here again. Before we go into the feedback, I just want to say a few words about adding hashtags to your entries because you know some of the old hands know this stuff, but if you're new here, it could be a little confusing because you put the picture in the album, right? Well, it's to confirm that you are participating in the challenge and not just uploaded a photo to that album by mistake easy to do. Oh look, there's birds in here, let's just upload a bird picture. Are you entering the challenge or not? That's why the hashtag is there and it's kind of important. Um, so that's really for you new guys. Welcome to everybody who's new in the group. It's amazing me how much this group has grown and seems to continue to grow. And it's wonderful to see everybody here joining in. I may well make a few suggestions along the way. I may be asking your opinion. So when we do that, please be ready to put something into the comments. Don't forget to like this uh, live broadcast. Please hit that like button now. I'll probably remind you again later because it makes a huge difference and helps this propagate out to more people. So hit that like button. <laughs> um, what else have I got here? Yeah, I think that's about it really. It's great to see everybody saying hello, getting lots of little hearts sent in. Uh, let me get my screen set up and we will go straight into our feedback session for the birds challenge. So here we go. As I said, some amazing images from you lovely people. Um, the feedback that I will give tonight, I try and choose images which will benefit the group as a whole. If it's a really good one, I want to explain why it works, what the photographer may or may not have done. If it's something where I think the photographer needs a little bit of help, I will offer some help and encouragement. Listen up, people, because it may help you to hear what I say to somebody else. Now, I know some people are a little bit like miffed because maybe you've been in the group for some time. I haven't chosen one of your images. I don't look at the names when I choose the image. I just choose the image. We've been working hard rebuilding our website because it's become a little bit of a mess. Once that project is completed, I am going to be setting up a feedback group. This is going to be a paid for group, but if you're really serious about your photography and you want that feedback, then we will, I'm going to set up a small group of photographers. There may be a wait list to join it, but for a small monthly fee, you are guaranteed we will meet in a separate place and there will be some additional bits and pieces which will come with that. Stay tuned uh, and you will find out more. Sign up to my newsletter to make sure you never miss anything. There is a link in the description below. Right, photographs. That's what you're here for. So let's take a look. Who's this? Randy Weatherly. I just, I am very drawn to this picture. Why does it work? Well, birds are not the easiest things to photograph, are they? You pretty much always need a long lens, but not always. But also, they're flighty things, pun intended. You know, you never know where they're going to go. You never know what they're going to do next. And trying to capture them with some great light or with a great expression, such as Randy has done here, that takes a bit of doing, you know, the startled osprey. But everything is technically spot on, you know, everything is absolutely pin sharp. It's quite easy to miss focus on things like this. Even with the extraordinary autofocus tracking that we have on a camera these days, it can be easy to miss it. This thing is so sharp, you could almost cut yourself on it. However, it doesn't have an over sharpened look. So we know that 
Randy got that right in camera. It's not something that's been fiddled with afterwards. So what can I say? Randy is a great shot. The angle of the bird is just right. We're getting a bit of a diagonal line going sort of, you know, from top left to bottom right. The background is nice and clear. So everything is really sharp on the bird. You know, this is about a bird. You haven't cropped in too tight, yet you have cropped in tight enough to make this a really strong bird portrait. Also, it's that decisive moment. Look at the shape of the wings. Look at the way the head is turned. Randy, if you're here, question. Um, I'd love to know, were you shooting on burst mode? Because burst mode is your friend when there's action, because you can just follow through the viewfinder, tap out. You don't have to hold it down forever and get thousands, but you know, you can just tap, tap that shutter button, fire out four or five frames every time the bird looks about right. And then you can get that perfect moment. Watching out for Randy, can't see you, my friend, so I'm guessing maybe you're not here this evening. But great shot. There are many. Let me just choose another which I was particularly, sorry, I have to sort my other screen out for a moment. That's good. Now, uh, I'm not gonna linger around here for too long, but Neil Letournier, you know, this is a great moody, misty sort of a, a moment, isn't it? I mean, as a photograph, even without the bird in there, it is a beautiful shot, that misty, early morning feel to it. Now, Brandy, I don't know if you were burning, sorry, Neil, <clears throat> I don't know if you were burning on burst, but it might have helped you because I can't help but think that as that bird swooped into the water, feet outstretched, he's coming into land, there's a great reflection going on. Now, Neil, if you were burning on burst as this bird came in, I'm just wondering, could you have caught a smashing little moment just as the feet started to touch the water and you get that little bow wave of spray, maybe, or possibly a slightly different angle on the wings. I mean, we can see this ripple in the water where it's come in quite low. Um, I presume it's landing, Neil. <laughs> I could be wrong, but it doesn't have the body language of a bird that is taking off. You've got a great composition. I like the way you framed it with the dark branches overhead, a little bit of grass in the foreground. Having the subject small in the picture just works because it gives us a feeling of being there. You're saying something about where we are. Um, but yeah, I think burst mode might have helped you because you just frame that shot, watched, 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 and then a few little taps, and you might have caught just a slightly more magical moment. I'm being hard on you because this is such a great picture and we all want to take it to another level, don't we? Great photograph. Mm, so many to look at and that's why I thought without too much preamble, we dive on in. Who's this? Emma Truesdale. <clears throat> now Emma has done something completely different here. Emma has, she's close to this bird. How do we know that this was close up and not from further away? Look at the wing. Look how the wing is stretched. Is stretched? Stretched. Wide angle lenses, they distort things. But the good thing about that is they give a real feeling of intimacy. So Emma, you were really close to this, weren't you? Um, Emma, if you're here, please just let me know. Um, because of the shape of the wing and it's given it a lovely, intimate feeling. So remember this, folks. Short wide angle lenses, they give you that intimate close feeling. A longer lens is more voyeuristic. You're looking at something from a distance. <clears throat> so how could we have helped this shot? Because technically it's spot on, or your exposure's nice, your colors are lovely, you've got a great little moment there. Um, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm going back to burst mode a little bit, Emma. I'm just wondering, hello Emma, you are here. That's fantastic. I'm just wondering if, it's very, very side on. If there was a moment, you know, as you followed it, I don't know what was going on. I wasn't there. Maybe it was you just had to move fast. Um, taken up the Western Cape of South Africa. Mm, I haven't been there for a long time. That's where I had my epiphany and became a photo photographer in Somerset West near Cape Town. That was the moment. Anyway, I digress. I think it's a great shot. I think it's a great shot. It's a sh the, the bushes down the bottom, they're just a little bit distracting for me. But, oh Emma, you gem, you were throwing seeds to the birds in order to get the picture. This is thinking like a photographer. 
because Emma's taking actions to create something, to make something happen. She's not just waiting and hoping, she's being proactive and looking for something, to, some way to create a reaction. Emma, it's a great shot and I'm not knocking it. I'm sorry you didn't go further, but it's a great shot. Louise Cooper, face paint artist, your first live at 4 a.m. That's dedication. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. What else have we got here? Right, now who's this? Hello, Frank. I don't believe we've met. Welcome. Nice to see you here, my friend. Okay, Frank. So what we've got here is yes, you've obviously got plenty of birds. I think the thing is the, the angle we're shooting from, Frank, this is, I guess, in your crouch down. However, there's just sort of a bit too much going on. We're looking down at the water. We're still looking down on the swan. I'm just thinking if you could have maybe got a little lower still so we could see some of the horizon, something of what's going on in the distance. That probably might have helped a little bit. We would have also lost some of that confusion of duck action going on in the background because they're very distracting from your swan. The other thing, which I think may have helped you, my friend, is possibly if you come further away, if you've seen the swan coming up and thought, right, I need to get further back so I can maybe include the whole swan. Or, of course, the alternative would be to zoom in a bit and just see if you can get a real swan's face. But again, burst mode can help you with this because if you could get the swan's beak straight into your camera, like it's really looking at you, that would be quite a powerful picture. Burst could help you with that. I hope that's useful to you, my friend, and to anyone else who's listening. Who have we got here? Rachel Wells. Hello, Rachel. You've caught a great little moment here. You really have. Um, what can I say? I assume it's a duck. I'm not very good at ornithology apart from pronouncing the word. But we've caught this little moment as the duck is entering the water. Again, I think burst mode may have been used here. By all means, please feel free to say so if you're here, Rachel. Um, it's a really great little moment. It's a little bit spoiled by, hello, Rachel. Oh, you're Rachel Wells here and you're Rachel Foster there. Very complicated. Little bit spoiled by, by the birds behind. Now, there's not much you can do about that. I totally get it. And I so hope you manage to, to hang around and get another opportunity. But nonetheless, you've got your focus in the right place. You've caught the, the seagull going down into the water. Um, you've got a little ripple going on. I love the shape of the wings. Your exposure's all good. Um, yeah, it's a good one. And I also quite like these little droplets of water that are still just hanging in the air. So that tells us, what does it tell us, folks? That Rachel was using a longish lens. She's either got a really smart autofocus or she was pre-focused. Um, and also, of course, a fast shutter speed because you need one with a long lens and it's just frozen those little drops of water. Beautifully done. Rogero, thank you, my friend. That's very kind of you. I think there's a thing here clicking. Now I'm going to click it and see what it does. I don't know if that sent you a heart, Ruggiero. Anyway, I digress once again. We need to be looking at photographs. Now then, moving on just a little bit from where we were. What else? Now here's a kind of cheeky fella. Tracy Strachan. Welcome, Tracy. It is an intense stare. You are absolutely right. You've got some rather nice light. I quite like this light, Tracy. The way it is just sort of coming in around the top of this, I don't know if it's an ostrich or a, a, an emu, something like that. Um, I quite like the light and that big, big eye sort of peering at you. The fence is a little bit annoying. Um, it's so difficult, isn't it, to get these things right. I can't help but think if maybe you could have moved around to your left a bit, just a bit, and, and got that maybe square on look. I don't know if it would work because, of course, lots of bird's eyes go that way and not that way. 
Um, it might have been interesting though, or maybe he would have turned his head sideways in order to look at you. It's just a thought. Um, good effort though, technically, technically good, the exposure's good, what more can I say? The trees are a little distracting, so maybe again by turning you could have had either all trees and not the sky, or the sky and not the trees, if that makes sense. Dancing with your camera, choreography of composition, moving your body in order to make the composition work. Nice one, Tracy. Now what's going on here? This is interesting because I don't know what's going on. Ah, now I see it a bit bigger. It's a bit more exciting. Ben Ellis. I don't believe we know each other either, Ben. Welcome. I rather like this. It's it's there's something like otherworldly about this because it's the angle. I think we're looking down from above, but we're not looking down from above. We're looking in from the side, aren't we? The the little bird coming in and feeding the chicks. I rather like those lines you've got going on around the shot, leading us in. So you notice this picture drew my eye because I was going, it's a bird, but what's going on here? These are little tricks which we can use to engage a viewer, to get people to think just for a moment. You were saying something about these birds, Ben, because we kind of know roughly where they are. They're up under the eaves of a building somewhere. And, you know, the little chicks are hungry and all that good stuff. Really like the position of mother or father bird's wing. Um, what more can I say? I think it's a great shot. Again, think about burst mode when you're in these situations, guys. And try not to chimp the back of the camera. Try not to look in the back. Because it's so complicated to think, oh, I got a good one, and then you want to look at it. Don't, don't, don't do it. Because while you're looking in the back of the camera, you're probably missing some hot bird action. So, for example, we don't know, but perhaps parent bird, well, you could have caught that moment as parent bird feeds the chick. Maybe you could have caught the moment when parent bird flew back out to go and find some more food, you know. You could have just got that launching off the nest sort of moment. So when some action is happening, do not take your eye away from that viewfinder. Just hold it. And I know you might be crouching in an uncomfortable position. Your knees are hurting and your legs are trembling. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Be ready, a little bit of burst action. Because shortly after this bird came in, I would imagine it turned around and went back out again. And I think that could have been a slightly more powerful picture or had it gone around the side and dropping it in. But great effort, Ben. Welcome. Let's just move up a bit because there are quite a lot. Wow, so many great pictures. Uh, I don't know why my mouse is accidentally on there, but Alan Baxter, I like that. <laughs> I'm sorry he hasn't gone further, but I do like this picture. I love the simplicity of it. And I think black and white was a really good choice. I love the way you have given the bird space. Look at this one, guys. The bird has got some space, you know. We, we, we're saying a bit about the bird here. We, we've kind of got the idea we're in a bit of an urban environment. It's standing on some steps. Um, I quite like these little pools of light going on. And the fact that you've just got the bird on the edge of a pool of light. Now, Alan, I don't know. I'm only guessing. But you're probably thinking, come on, please, just go up a step. Just go up a step. Go on, just go up a step so that it's in that slightly brighter bit of light because it would have popped even stronger because these two little bits of light are a little bit bright. They're a little bit distracting. I'm being hard on Alan. Alan's done nothing wrong. But I'm just thinking it may have just helped a bit if the bird was a step up, you know? Nonetheless, it is a cracking picture and those little highlights all are all part of it. These one, two, three little highlights surrounding the bird. And I like the deep shadows and the, the shape you've almost got in here as well, possibly from another shadow. Maybe it's your shadow. I don't know. It is a beautiful picture. Um, I like it a lot. I, I, I think it works. I hope everybody found that a little bit useful because if you're thinking, how do I get a shot like that? Look how simple. Look how, look how the lines are straight. Look how much care Alan has taken to get everything straight. Nothing's wonky. He is, you know, absolutely spot on, square on to what's going on. What have we got going on here? Sue Owen. 
Okay, thank you, Sue. It's not a bird, but the best you could do with a pendant and a bottle of perfume. We have got an owl in there, though, so I'm going to give you some credit, you know, for having a sense of humour and at least doing something because we don't learn by watching endless videos. We learn by getting out there and doing something. Who's this? Rob Cook. Hello, Rob Cook. I kind of like it, Rob. Technically spot on. I would expect that from you. We know each other. Um, and I love the intimacy. Again, we're in really pretty close to these birds. Rob's got his camera down on the ground. Look at the detail that is in those feathers. It is absolutely cracking. I think it's a little bit busy, Rob. That's my only thought. Almost like if you were back a touch further and we weren't cutting these other birds off, maybe you couldn't. Maybe there was thousands of them. I don't know. Um, but I do like the expression. I like that little bit of seed or something. It's good in its beak. But the thing which really gets me is just the tonal range, the detail in these feathers, because it's so easy for these things to get blown out. And of course, it's absolutely pin sharp, and yet it's separated from the other birds. Nice shot, Rob. Let's move up a bit. Where are we going? Oh, who's this? Simon Boyle. What an action shot. What an action shot. Simon, I don't know if you're here, but I'm going to guess you were birding on burst. Um, and I'm not banging on. You haven't got to do that, but I'm just saying it helps. Look at the simplicity. Look at the body language. Look at the angle of this, uh, what is it, a red kite coming in to grasp a branch. Now, a huge amount of bird photography is understanding the birds themselves, understanding their behaviours, their actions, looking at where they go, what they do, or what time of day they do it. Um, that can be a big thing. One of the things that for me works so well with this is apart from the body language and the action and the feathers and the raised foot, it's a decisive moment, absolutely spot on decisive moment. But there's nothing going on in the background to draw our attention away from the subject the bird um yeah technically all spot on what more can i say great shot simon let's just move on up just a little bit further who's this andrew croft what's going on here andrew hitting the brakes indeed <laughs> you missed the one where the goose very nearly took out a pigeon it's just off camera <laughs> Okay, Andrew, you tried. You gave it a good go. You're technically good. Your exposure's good. My friend, you've got quite a lot of distractions going on in here. The people in the background, they are really quite a large distraction. We are always drawn to human figures. Um, now, if the human figures were in some way engaged with the bird, yeah, they're looking at it, but they're not like engaged. Now, if they were sort of hunkered down along the edge there. Good evening, Andrew Croft. Nice to see you here, sir. Um, hunkered down along the edge. They're concentrating on the bird. They're, they're throwing some food to it or something like that, rather than bystanders. They're very close to the top of the frame as well. So for me, Andrew, I think one of the things would be if, if you see, you know, the goose coming in, is try and anticipate where it's going to go and what angle to shoot from. So I think if you've been down low, at the edge of the pond, you'd have given it a much more powerful aspect because we're kind of looking across the path from an angle like you're sitting on a bench or something watching. Um, but if you could have concentrated more on the goose and maybe got more in front of it, this is one of those thinking like a photographer things. You see the goose coming in from sort of over here somewhere and you think, okay, I'm here, so I need to move around here to be in front of it before it lands so that the angle's right. It's, it's that thinking ahead, pre-visualizing. But yeah, technically good, good effort. And I also like this reflection. I think we could have made a little more of that had we been in just the right place. Good effort though, my friend. Go and give it another go. Take the feedback and go try again in a different way. 
I'm going to have to move up a bit. Oh, we're not. We're, we're all going to be going to be down the bottom here. What a beautiful picture from Jeff Frost. Um, so many interesting things. What have we got going on? Oh, it's our lovely friend Irene Carson. Hello, Irene Carson. That's kind of interesting because it's unusual behaviour. You've done a really cool job here, Irene. You've caught a little moment of something going on. Now, I haven't read the description. I read too slowly. There's a few too many words for me there um, to read during a broadcast. But you've caught an interesting moment. Is that a cocky or a something or a galar or whatever it? Um, there's obviously a bit of an argument going on. And I just love the fact that the cocky is hanging upside down. There's something strange happening. You've seen a really great moment. You did this when we were in uh, Vietnam. You know, you said, I've never had a go at street photography and finding decisive moments. And you've become really, really good at it. So, uh, nice one. It's simple again. Look, we haven't got too much going on in the background. There's no distractions. We've got an intriguing picture because it kind of makes you go, what's going on here? There's some strange behavior. I love the engagement between the birds. The, is it a noisy minor, noisy minor bird is kind of leaning over the barge going, the cocky, which I think is rather fun. Beautifully caught. So many great shots here. Oh, now there's a name we haven't seen for a long time. Hello, Haley Elizabeth Buckland. Welcome back. <clears throat> I love it. I like that verticalness that you've got going on here. It's almost an abstract, isn't it? As I seem to remember, we haven't seen you for a long time, Haley. Forgive me. I don't really quite remember your style, but it's just a lovely abstract. And I also remember you're very good at this stuff. It's just like, what is that shape? What are those colours? Then you notice the eye, and then it sort of draws, draws you in. Um, I think it is an amazing picture. So you see, guys, how Haley has concentrated on a part of the bird, but created something really rather powerful from it. There's some nice, simple colours. We've got orange and sort of shades of grey, and that's about it. Everything is standing out. Obviously, technically, it's all spot on. But look at the light, backlight. Backlight is just marvellous. Look at this highlight running around here. And so this side of our bird is pretty much in shade, but we've got another little highlight running down the bill. I think it works absolutely brilliant. Welcome back, Haley. Please, please, please stick around. Be good to see some more of your stuff again. Um, I think that shot really works. It's great to see a vertical with a vertical subject that works so well. Wow, so many pictures. Oh, Cheyenne, I can never remember your real name and I know you're gonna be here because you've got so many different names on so many different platforms. I think this is fun. I just think this is fun. Now, I also know you're quite an accomplished photographer. So um, I'm guessing you kind of put this in because I also recognize your sense of humor. We've been on some workshops. Um, yeah, I get your sense of humour here. I really do. Uh, I don't think it's your strongest bird picture, but I also know you're pretty good with the, the social documentary sort of street type angle. But I do like it. I like the lines. Look at all these lines running left to right in the fence and in the shadows. These are all things that, to me, I, f I find it intriguing. So, yeah, it's not the most beautiful, amazing, stunning picture of a bird, but I find it intriguing and it makes me want to know more. There are more lines, the verticals going on down here in that big strong post. Um, I think it's an interesting picture. I really do. Oh, so many I want to talk about. Look at that beautiful picture from Dan Robinson. We just got to stop and look at it. This was so hard, guys. Trying to go through these pictures and trying to choose and trying to narrow it down and just going back and going back and going back and going, no, I still like that one because there are so many I like. What a beautiful photograph. There's nothing I can say really in the way of critique or feedback. How can it be improved? Well, I can't really, can it? It's a great shot. We've got a fast shutter speed, freezing the motion, a long lens, a shallow depth of field. 
an absolutely perfect decisive moment freezing the droplets of water look at this curling shape coming up through here of the water as it's been flicked by the wing as the bird is coming up out of the water it's a truly beautiful picture dan and you should be so proud of it i should all of you for entering but you know you should be so proud of it i think it is a a gorgeous picture i can't really say any more than that i always feel guilty doing these things because i think oh they all need to get more of a win but hey let's just move on let's just move on this is fun hello gary cleesby <clears throat> yeah i can see your sense of humor in there it's just good fun isn't it you know that bird loves you mate that bird just loves you this is a lovely simple idea Almol, Almol Taneja, 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 apologies, I don't know how I pronounce your, your name. But look at this for a lovely, simple, clever composition. We've got that bright bird against the, the bright red bird against the green background. Red and green, they are best, best friends. Sure, the subject is tiny in the picture, but does that matter? Sure, the subject is breaking the rules of composition. Don't put your subject in the middle. Sod the rules. It's your picture. You put the subject wherever you want. Because of that repeating pattern background of the pine trees and the green and then the red, which is the opposite colour, bam, socking you in the eye right from the middle of the shot. I really, really do like it. We've also got a very subtle bit of sort of lighting effect almost going on on this central part of the branch. Now, I don't know, maybe Amol, if you're here, please tell me whether or not uh, you added a tiny, soft, subtle vignette. I have no problem with that because it's done so gently and it just looks like a bit of additional natural light. It's just sort of sitting on that branch because it's sitting out just that little bit further, even though the light is soft. That just works. These are things to look out for people. Simple things, you know, and complementary colors. They're the things that make it work. Absolutely splendid. Susan Firth, I've just seen you reminding people to please hit the like button. I'm just gonna ask you, please hit the like button. I'm gonna back that one up. We all do it, we all forget. <laughs> I do it all the time. Who have we got here? Alec Murray. Just a simple one here, Alec. You've got a great exposure. It's really easy to overexpose swans. Your angle of view. I, we're looking at the swan very much at the angle we always see a swan from, i.e. standing on the bank looking down. Unfortunately, when we see something from the same angle, we always see it. Our brain switch off and we don't take that much notice. So my suggestion to you would be, try and shoot from a different angle, in a different way. If the swan maybe came closer, and you couldn't get down lower because maybe there's steps or a river bank or something like that. How about holding your camera? Where's mine? Here we go, I've got one on the desk here. How about getting your camera and holding it out at arm's length, something like this, you know, and just pointing it down above the swan. Just, just shoot, just random. Yeah, you can't see through it, so what? <clears throat> it's worth a try because then you'd have a very different angle. And you never know if the swan kind of went like that and looked up at your camera, you'd have a really powerful picture. This is just one of the things to remember, guys. Try and be different. Try and look at things in a different way. That is how we manage composition, to look at things somewhat differently. But well done, Alec. I like it still. I like the fact you got the, the composition nice, the fact that you have worked well with it. Who's this, Karen Toy Downs? I just read your comment. You take some very nice pictures, Karen. Um, and I like this. I love the, the fact that we've got these complementary colours um, going on here. I don't know what sort of bird it is. Again, I don't know. I'm sure someone will tell me in the chat. Um, I think the light isn't being your friend here, Karen, because, of course, this bird, if it likes eating sunflower seeds, it's going to be a master of camouflage within those sunflowers. 
there'd been a little bit of light maybe poking in through here or from here and just kind of hitting the bird. I'm being harsh on you because it's a really nice shot. It's a great moment. You've done it technically absolutely spot on. I really, really do like it. I'm just saying what I think would lift it to the next bit would have been that moment. Now, of course, something to remember everybody. I'm being really harsh on good pictures. Why wouldn't I be? Because everybody wants coaching, um, myself included. But something to remember is when you see photographs like this in BBC Wildlife magazine or wherever it may be, don't forget you're only seeing the tip of the iceberg. You're just seeing the very, very pinnacle of that photographer's work. You don't know how long they have been in that hide waiting for the light, for the weather. Could be many, many days. I have many professional photographer friends who have spent so long some of the exhibitions at the Exposure Festival by friends and colleagues. You know, you see maybe, what, 12, 15 images up on a wall. What you don't see is the fact that it possibly was a project that took many, many years to complete, involving trips to all over the world and many, many repeated visits where sometimes absolutely nothing happened. So be patient and give yourself permission to keep working, keep working, just as Karen has done. Lovely picture, Karen. Thank you for putting it up and sharing it. <laughs> this is fun. Who's this? Glyn Haskins. Haskins. Sorry, Glyn. Glyn's used a wide angle lens here, and I think it's kind of fun, you know? Um, it was raining, and I didn't want to go out and get wet. <laughs> oh, marvellous. But nonetheless, Glyn, it is a great shot. Look at the, the way Glyn's got the light behind this duck sculpture and, and kind of made it stand out. And also the wide angle lens has given it that comical look. Remember we were talking about wide angle lenses bring things close. They kind of make it more intimate. Good one. Nice one, Glenn. Where are we? We're nearly halfway out the page. We're going to keep rocking and rolling. Oh dear, I want to try and choose someone I haven't spoken about, but oh, is that Tanya McGregor? I don't know if I've spoken about you, Tanya. Another beautiful photograph. What more can I say? What more can I say? We've got a nice diagonal thing going on here. I like the way you've positioned your subject just a little bit off center. Shooting vertically works very, very well. We've got some soft light but it's still backlight, slightly directional. Look at the breast of the bird. You see it's brighter than the back. That's, that's giving us a shape. It's helping the shape of the bird really, really work. We've got a very, very shallow depth of field, which is super concentrating us on the bird and, and the flower, and that's all there is. Everything else is, is very, very soft. Shot with a Sony A7 III camera, yeah. Okay, a 150 to 500 mil lens, that's a very long focal length. And it's really in wildlife that you start to actually need specialist equipment. I was a little bit, ooh, do we do birds or don't we? Because you often need big long lenses and things like that. Beautiful picture, Tanya. How can it be improved? I don't think it can. I mean, what more is there to say? It's a great shot. Um, Okay, this highlight on this twig is a little bit annoying. Did you have time to get the shears out and walk over there and trim it and go back and refocus and put the lens on? No. So, there we go. Beautiful shot. Who else can we look at here? <laughs> That's just making me laugh. Bye there. Oh, I see. <laughs> comments please is it says there so yeah okay I haven't left any comments I can think of a few nice sense of humor but I'm gonna move on um, what have we got going on here Marcus Allen this is kind of different I kind I quite like it I know I'm drawn to slightly strange things but I rather like the black and white and, and going with the silhouettes and you obviously read what I'd put on the page when we announced the challenge that try and get a moment when if there's a lot of birds, one of them's doing something different, which which you kind of have here. Um, difficult when you've got so many because you've got to cut some off. We've got a missing beak and a missing bum, which is a kind of a shame. 
Um, but nonetheless, again, I don't know if any of those birds took off. Those are, they look like geese or something. I don't know what they are. Um, flappy. But if you could have caught a moment when one of them took flight, that would work so well. Again, this is one of those things. Do not stop concentrating for a moment. Give yourself permission to do these things on your own. And also, of course, you've got to make sure you are completely au fait with your camera and its controls and how it works. Because you can't be thinking about, you know, the birds coming into land here. Remember, remember the goose landing on the pond? You can't be thinking, OK, the goose is coming into land on the pond at that angle. I need to move around here to backlight it and be aligned with the front of it and then focus it and manage the exposure and the composition as you're running towards it. If your camera isn't effortless and easy, and that's where my online courses come in. So please, masterclass in photography. Masterclass doesn't mean you've got to be super good already. It means it will help you master all of the things that you need to be able to manage your camera, light and composition. And it's all in one place. Photo mastery. Go and have a look if you haven't had a go already, please. Great shot. Where are we? We're at 20 minutes to go. So let's keep moving up the line a little bit further. Who's this? Jeff McCarthy. <laughs> okay, we've got another good one. Yeah, out to lunch. It's quite a nice picture actually, Jeff. I rather like it. It's just when it was small, I thought, is that a bird? It isn't. It's a leaf. But it is quite a nice picture nonetheless. And we're still very much on the bird theme. So I am absolutely not knocking you. And the black and white, that works. Dorothy. Hmm. <laughs> Great colours, really great colours. Um, you know, we're almost with the classic peacock shot, aren't we? You know, with the fan tail going on around the back and all that good stuff. I think we needed a little more of a decisive moment. I'm being hard on you. I am, I am being your coach now. Because it's a lovely picture, I'm not saying it isn't. I'm saying how could we take it up a little bit further? The bird is kind of disengaged shall we say the peacock is kind of looking like down over there it's a bit like if i was talking to you and i'm just kind of going yeah well you see guys it's kind of blah blah blah, blah. you know what i mean maybe if the bird was looking straight at you i think that would give it a lot more power or also if you could have moved to the right just a touch if you just shuffle to the right a bit then you'd have all that you know you'd have bird's head here lining up with that central feather and you'd have a very very symmetrical look um, when we did that street photography video with Rob Irving you know he was talking about planimetric staging having a background which is flat and, and it kind of works quite well in this stuff but it is nonetheless a great shot the colors are lovely your exposure is spot on um, and I like the way you've excluded distractions from around it those are the things which really help to make it work. Oh la la, that is a lovely picture. Who's this, Michael James? What a lovely picture. I mean, you know, it's just spring on a plate, isn't it? I didn't mean on a plate, as in we're gonna deep fry them or something. Um, beautiful, I love the way you're lined up with that little bright area in the background here, in the clouds. So we've got the birds are standing out. Um, if you're here, Michael, I'd love to know, did you do that on purpose? Did you shuffle around a bit and think, I want to put them in front of that bright spot because you can move things around as you compose. This is all part of my masterclass in photography. How to do that when you look at the shot and you think, oh, the birds are against a dark bit. They'd stand out more against a bright bit. How do you do that? How do you move the birds and the bush and the sky and make it line up? You move your body, you dance with your camera. Great shot. Love that little pool of light on them. The way it's just bringing everything to life in this little bush. Michael, my coaching to you to lift it up a bit, again, would possibly be just sit there and wait with burst mode. I don't know, maybe they just buggered off the moment you took the shot. But they look kind of settled. Because if you hold that shot, don't just take it and look at it. Hold the shot, click, yeah, okay, now do not move a muscle. Don't even breathe. 
because I think if this beak wasn't behind this one, if this one came out from behind it and looked in the same direction, or possibly the other direction, I think there may have been another decisive moment which could have really helped you with this. So once again, try not to take a shot. You know you've got a good one, I know. Don't take the camera from your eye until the action is over. The birds have left, you know, or, or you know, you really have been there and they've kind of looked this way and they've looked that way and they've done a little dance and spot a ballet. You've got all that, you've got half a dozen frames of each. You know you've absolutely nailed it. Beautiful shot, Michael. Where else are we going? Just enjoy these as we move up. That's lovely. Who's this? Ken. Ken Hammond. Ken Harmon. What could be more birdie than that, hey? And look at that lovely, lovely light. You've got some great colours and you've got some lovely light just highlighting the subject uh, beautifully. You know, those two little eggs and one where one of the birdies has, you know, gone off to go and do birdie stuff somewhere. But it's the light, this, this beautiful little bit of light that's going on in around here, which I think just really makes it work, allowing those shadows to go dark because it absolutely highlights it. Your composition is lovely. Okay, you popped a bit of flash in there. That's absolutely awesome, Ken, because what Ken's done is create that light. You know, without it, it might have all been a bit flat. Beautifully done, Ken. Little bit of a flash coming in. And also looking at these, this the, the flash wasn't on the camera. Ken, correct me if I'm wrong, please. But looking at this, I think your flash was kind of above and slightly to the left. Am I right? I could be wrong, um, but it looks like it because look at the shadow coming here. It's not like the flash was on the camera right above the lens going poof because I don't think. Okay, yeah, thank you, Ken. Off camera flash to the side. That's what's bringing the light in at an angle and giving it a bit of a texture. Highlight and shade, highlight and shade. So we've got the highlight and then we've got the shade around the back. Beautifully done, Ken. Beautifully done. <clears throat> oh, this is such fun. Chris Kemp Renninger. Renninger. I don't know. You can't tell me, so let's just move on. But what a great fun shot. What a cracking shot. And these are the little birds, aren't they? That the, They hang around, what are they called? Cattle peckers or something. They hang around getting the mites and the things out, out, out the cows. We've got a fair few of these, these highland cattle wandering around the forest where I live. Um, oh wow, so this is a photo you'd pre-visualized, if you hear Chris, so this is a photograph that you pre-visualized and thought, I know what would make a great shot. And then you concentrated on getting it. And you did. What more can I say? Chris, you've got some lovely light. These little highlights going on in the background, I quite like the little bright bit on the nose. The little highlight on the bird's forehead, it really, really does work and it is a good fun shot. Looking at it here, it doesn't look absolutely sharp. It's almost like you maybe had a tiny bit of camera shake. The only other thing I would suggest is, I know the bird is very small, but maybe give it a little bit more space. It just feels to me like the, the the, the Highland cow is in a bit of a box and it's just kind of banging around inside this box here. Um, maybe it would work just a little better. Shame about the piece of wire in the way, but hey, there's probably not much you could do about that because you're waiting and you're waiting and you're watching this cow and suddenly one of the birds goes on that cow over there and oh, it's so frustrating. You get absolutely 150% for perseverance and giving it your best shot. Um, and it is a great shot. I love the position of the bird. I love the bit of light on its face, the body language. Beautifully done, Chris. <laughs> That's kind of fun, but I'm going to move on. That, who's this? Veromoga. Veromoga. I like this. This was in and out of my chosen ones a few times. I do like this a lot. In fact, I'm just checking my chosen folder to make sure I'm not talking about one too soon. No, it is one which unfortunately I took it out, but I love this picture. I love it. We've got, it's so simple, the black and white, the bright sky is just gone. I love the cluster of lamps going on here. 
But the thing for me that totally makes this work is this fella up here on the right, about to leave the frame. And I love the fact that he's got his nose, his beak right against the edge of the frame. It really draws attention and there's just enough motion blur in that bird and it works. Not an easy thing to do, not a thing you can stage or plan. It takes a lot of perseverance. Pharaoh, if you're here, please give us a wave, say hello in the chat. Because I really, really like this shot. Coaching, how could it be improved? <clears throat> I think if you could, I, this is just me. I think maybe if you had just a little bit more of the lamppost, that's all, just a little bit of the stalk. So we had the whole cluster of the lights. Such a hard thing to do when you're looking at the birds and waiting for a moment. And I'm guessing the, the capturing of that one flying out of the frame, it was just absolutely magical. Um, whether you'd seen them doing it, you're waiting for it, I don't know. That's why I'd love to know if you're here in the chat. Please, please tell us. Um, but for me, guys, it works. Also, this is one that could divide the crowd. So I'm going to throw it open. Please tell me, what do you think? Do you like this flappy bird right on the edge of the frame? Or would you rather it was further in? Um, please just pop something into the comments now. Just just, just say. Because just because it's my opinion doesn't mean it's right. It's just my opinion. Um, yeah, I've been around it a while and I'm a pretty good teacher. But at the end of the day, it is for all of us to shoot the pictures that we like and it's really interesting just watch the comments guys as some come in because everybody is right in those comments every single one photography is subjective and uh, you know some people like the bird on the edge some people would like it a little further in i just saw a couple of comments saying a little bit more of the lamppost um Okay, so Lenny Hulse is saying you turn the bird so it was going to the left. Interesting, Lenny, interesting. It's one of the reasons I'm excited to get this feedback group set up because then when we have these conversations, we can engage and then you can go, well, I'll tell you why, and da, 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 da. and then it all starts to get a conversation going. <clears throat> the feedback groups won't just be me talking to you. They will be in an online hangout where we can talk to each other each month. Anyway... I think it's a cracking shot and you can see from the comments that there is no right or wrong. There is purely what you like. I think that's a beautiful shot. Um, another very powerful photograph here. How powerful is that? Dave Hand, you know? Dave, if you're here, I'd love to know, is that in the wild or is that a studio shot? I'm just intrigued to know because it is so perfect. But the look the light, the, the softness of it. And I don't mean softness, it's not sharp. I mean, there is a subtlety in the light, in the contrast. It's very easy to, to maybe push these things a bit harder. It's a little dark, but it is soft. We've got all those wonderful tones and colors going on in this whatever sort of bird it is. Big bitey one. Um, yeah, I just think it's a beautiful shot. I just think it's a beautiful shot. Hello, one of my monitors just turned off for some unknown reason. We will hope it comes back on because there's stuff on there that I need. Right, now I am looking for... There's so many cracking pictures in here. There's just so many. What can I say? I love this. Who's this? Andrew Lovelock. What a great photograph. Um... I love the colours of this and, and you know, the, this is a very classic sort of a rule of thirds, but look at the colours, look how well these colours work. Subtle hues of blue against yellow. What's not to like? You know, we got the, we got the trunk of the tree, the gnarliness of the bark, <clears throat> the angle, the heron's head looking off to the side. Uh, but really, there's only a couple of colours going on here. Andrew, it doesn't look to me to be quite sharp. The, 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 the branch is kind of the thing which, which is giving it away. I'm also looking and seeing there's quite a bit of grain. So I don't know if you had to crop in a bit. By the way, no problem with grain. No problem with shooting at high ISOs. You've got to do it sometimes. <clears throat> it does not detract from this shot. Also, Andrew has caught a really great decisive moment. 
You know, the bird is engaged. It's doing something. There's something about the line and the bottom third here of, of the trunk and then the eye line of the bird going back out the other way. I love it. I think it's a great photograph, Andrew. I don't know. I didn't really. Yeah, my coaching would be, could you have made it a little bit sharper? Possibly not. I don't know. And also, you sometimes get these moments. And then when you go for them, it's it's not necessarily easy to do because, you know, it may have lasted just a fraction of a second. We just don't know. I'm just scrolling up slowly, looking at pictures as we go towards the top because it's approaching time to go through our finals. There's one. I was looking for that one. I was also looking for another one, if I can find it. I really love this. This, to me immediately puts me into a place as i said i tend not to read the comments or look at the name but i was drawn to this because the first thing i thought of was a book called birdsong by sebastian Falks, set during the first world war it's a quite a terrible and distressing book but it is also an insight into something and that is what i the moment i saw this that's what i got and it was only after i saw diane's comment uh, about the pigeons, the messenger pigeons uh, used in World War I. Uh, you said you tried to give it that vibe. Diane, you gave it that vibe. It gives me a bit of goosebump, this picture. Um, I think it's a smashing photograph. And, you know, yeah, I, it was, it absolutely stood out to me. There are some others in there, though. But I think it is a very, very powerful picture, Diane. Be proud. And there is one person whose picture I do want to just have a little look at. If I can find it quickly, please just bear with me for a moment, guys, because I just want to see if I can find it in amongst all of this. Actually, I've just thought there is another way I can do this. Um, and bear with me just for a moment because I'm just going to enlarge something off my other screen because I just want to give a little shout out to our friend Ava Marie. Um, let me make that a bit bigger for you. I couldn't find it in the Facebook album. Sorry, Ava, but I do know it's there. And I know you're watching. <clears throat> and for someone so young as you, Ava, to be doing this challenge all the time, it's just absolutely magical as far as I'm concerned. Now then, Ava, a bit of coaching for you because I do want to help because, you know, you're so passionate about doing these things. I really like your bird. And I also really like your tumble down sort of brickwork and stone going on around here. And it kind of, for me, it works quite well with the greenery in the background here. To me, the bit which is distracting doesn't quite help it, I think, is, is the aviary or, the, or whatever it is, the cage that's going on here. So I don't know if you could do this, Ava, but if you could have been a bit closer maybe moved round to your left a bit towards that cage there you might have been able to get the bird more against the green and i just think it would have helped but what more can i say you know i totally think you rock keep going keep practicing because i just love it that you are so excited about your photography good on you okay girls and boys i'm gonna just change our shot because it is kind of time to go look at some other things. Takes me a moment, bear with me. Ava, right, I've just seen your dad's comment. I wondered that, that whether or not, you know, that big flappy bird in front of you is probably half as big as you are, you know? Um, yeah, whether or not it was a bit scary to get closer and round to the side, I completely understand. Nonetheless, good on you. Good on you. Well done, Ava. Indeed, Nan Kelly. OK, so let me just check a couple of things. I need to move them around. Right, I think we're pretty much ready. So before we start having a look at if you like my chosen pick of the months please remember guys this isn't a competition this isn't something to win it's a challenge for everyone to go through i choose some that i think are my favorites 
Um, it doesn't mean they're the best. It just means that I like them. That is all that it means. Um, again, when we do the feedback group, I'm hoping we could get maybe a couple of guest judges, some of the people I know from Exposure and National Geographic and stuff to come and have a little talk. Then we might do some competition things. It might be something for later. We're playing with ideas. I will come into the group. We'll have a chat about it and find out what you guys want before we go ahead and do it. Um, right, so let's have a look at things. Just before we do, I just want to say there is a link in the description where you can sign up to my newsletter. We've revamped this, we've upgraded it quite a lot in the last couple of months. We try and give you some stuff that really is of value, maybe is a little bit interesting and fun as well. Besides that, you of course get regular monthly videos. Um, and also, you wouldn't, you'd be absolutely kept up to date I wish I could figure out how to work my computer, but here we go. Here we go. You know, with things that are going on. So you probably know, maybe you don't, but you know, we've got the uh, seminar and photo walk in London on the 16th of this month. Um, very, this is one of the locations we'll shoot. This is a pano. I'm going to be doing a little bit with people on the photo walk section, helping you understand how to shoot panos, how to make them work. Um, and also, this is handheld. We're not using tripods and things. This is a handheld pano of maybe 10 shots, all stitched together in Lightroom. Boof, really, really simple. But the effect is absolutely great. So please, make sure you're signed up onto the newsletter. Don't miss a thing about our workshops and all the other things that are going on. We've got Morocco coming up soon. There's a couple of places left. You can bring your partner. They don't have to be a photographer. It's going to be a brilliant one. There is nothing that they won't enjoy doing on that workshop. Links in the description below, guys, so please go take a look. Right, so let's have a look at my chosen pictures. I'm going to have to move this around so I can see who did them because poor blind old man, I can't see. Right, so the first one, which I keep coming back to, I'm afraid, I'm not afraid, I'm proud to come back to, is from K uh, Kim Skirton, which I think there's just something about it for me. It's that three in a line. It's that the, there, there are things happening here. I like the three in the background that are slightly, you know, out of focus, that are, that, that, are, that are leaning over as they dive in. But these three are really close, and, and that uniform gap, there's just... A dynamism to this which really really attracted me it's also very very simple we're really looking at the birds we know they're part of a flock but these ones are sufficiently sharp and the others sufficiently soft that it's separating them out the other thing that really got me is the horizon is level that's not an easy thing to do now maybe you cropped it level I don't care but it's an attention to detail which I think works really really well there's also a kind of feeling of intimacy. It's almost like these birds are quite close. Um, I don't know if you're here, Kim, but I'd love to know if you are, whether you were close or far away or, or quite, you know, where you were when shooting this. Nonetheless, I think it is a cracking image. It got me excited. Oh, bother. <laughs> I knew I was doing something wrong. <laughs> yeah, I did. I talked about one I wasn't supposed to talk about. I missed it. Dan, what more can I say? I've already said it in the critique. It is such a beautiful, powerful picture with that little swirl going on with the with the, with the little you know droplets of water from the flap of the wing. When I realised my mistake, I thought, he's just got to keep going because I don't want him to know yet that he was in my bag. Anyway, nonetheless, what a beautiful shot. What a cracking capture. Same from all of you. We're now coming on to one of our regulars for a long time, our friend Dean. So, you know, what more can I say, Dean? You know, you're a very accomplished photographer. You've been in our group for a long time, but you obviously know your staff. This is one of the things that works so well with Photo Creative. We've got some very accomplished photographers, and we've also got people at the start of their journey. Um, and it's great because everybody looks after everyone else and helps and inspires and, and all that good stuff. I think the thing with this, Dean, is it is a perfect moment. 
Look at the absolute precision of the wings. Look at that beautiful curved shape of the bird. The detail in the feathers. The light is just slightly coming from behind and it's putting those shapes onto the edges of the feathers of the wing and the tail. But most of all, look at the bird's eye. Look at the face. There's one little dappled highlight just kissing that eye. Um, beautiful shot, Dean. You know, what more can I say? It really is an absolutely stunning photograph. You know, now if you're at the start of your journey, you look at any of these pictures or many of the other wonderful images that are in this album, do not be disheartened. Just remember that the guys who can do this, they put a lot of work and a lot of effort into it. They've learned how to use the equipment, the paintbrushes. Remember, if you have a Gibson Les Paul guitar, you know, you're not going to sound like Hendrix unless you have practiced, unless you have worked incredibly hard to get there. It's not the tools that take the picture, it's you. Beautiful picture, Dan. I'm very enthusiastic. The other one here is from our friend, <laughs> Jamie Smith. I really, really love this, Jamie. It is so, so simple. To me, it's an album cover or something. Um, what more can I say? I love the fact the birds are in silhouette. And to me, there's, there's a really great decisive moment because it's not like the two birds are identical. I love the way the bird on the left has got one foot raised and has got a slightly different body language, like the head's cocked and pulled back a bit. Whereas the other one on, on the right of the frame, he's just kind of staring at it like, what are you doing? <laughs> and that little sprig, so well spotted, Jamie. So well spotted. Yeah, I think you said it there, Alan. Beautifully minimal. I think it is a lovely picture. Get it on your wall, my friend. All of you get these on your walls, by the way. Um, there's nothing better than coming down the stairs or going into the living room and looking at your latest favourite image. I'm a big advocate. Go buy yourself a nice picture frame, stick it on the wall. Your latest favourite image, get it printed and stick it in there. Prints are so cheap these days. You don't have to change the frame. Just change the thing that's inside it every so often. It will give you a little boost of inspiration and help you raise your confidence. Our next image is from Louise Cooper. <laughs> if I remember correctly, you're down under, Louise. Um, it's just a great action shot. I, I did look in really, really close at this because I'm not quite sure what it is they're eating, but I do feel sorry for it. You have caught a great little moment here. Um, if you're here, Louise, and I guess it's pretty early in the morning for you, I would be interested to know, <clears throat> were you shooting on burst mode? Because I know you've done a few in here with your phone and they've always been cracking photographs. Oh, you're here, Louise. Good to see you. Um, fish guts. Nice, I've got some for my dinner. Great little moment. It is a real storytelling moment. We did a video a while ago about, you know, saying something about something in a picture rather than just taking a picture of something. You know, you've got some great light. Look at the light. We're always talking about light, how the light is coming in from behind. And look at the highlight going around those pelicans necks, coming through the crops, you know, giving them detail. Um, yeah, it's it's. It's a real, it's a, it's a wildlife documentary picture, isn't it? It's a little piece of the life, a day in the life of these birds. Uh, great shot, Louise. Beautifully done. And so now we're just coming to the one which I just kept coming back to over and over again. I don't know why, it made me laugh, it made me smile. I like it. If you haven't had any feedback tonight, please don't be disheartened. I can't choose everybody. And if you're someone who hasn't had any for a while, well, we're going to be addressing that very, very soon. Um, yeah, the next challenge will go up after this live stream finishes. I will put a post into the group. Um, if you haven't done so already, please hit that like button. Don't forget, we've got some awesome workshops. We've got the one in London. London, the easiest place in the world to reach. So, you know, hop on the train, get yourself to London. It's right near Waterloo Station. What could be easier? We're going to have a bang in time. Go look at the website, get yourself on there. I know quite a few of you are, but I really, time's short now. 
we need to do this. So you've been a wonderful group of people. You still are a wonderful group of people. And this is the one I just kept coming back to from Michelle Dana. It just kept making me smile. There's something about this picture which just makes me happy. Again, look at the light. Look at the light. It's just come kind of kissing the back of this, this pigeon and it's giving it a wonderful shape and texture. We've got that diagonal shadow and highlight at the bottom and the bird's just standing in the highlight part. But also Michelle is really telling us something about where we are. We know we're in an envi urban environment. If you hear me, Shell, I'd love to know where is it, because I think you live in Bern, don't you? Or somewhere like that. Um, Michelle's been on a couple of workshops. <clears throat> and I think you've got another one booked as well, which would be awesome. Um, I just love the whole composition, the position of the house, soft in the background. It's kind of like balancing the position of the bird. The way the bird, the decisive moment, the way the bird, the pigeon, is looking over its shoulder as if to say, well, you sort off. I'm trying to have a moment. That's my interpretation. Um, the beautiful bridge, the way the light is just touching a few places. Look how it's just picking up the flags on the bridge, but not much else apart from the bird. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. Cracking shot. Wonderful. All of you, thank you so much for being you. Thank you for being here. Um, those of you who make donations to help pay some of the costs of this group, you're, you are helping everybody get benefit from this. And I really want to give a big shout out to all of you. In fact, I want everybody listening to this, get on your feet and give them a bloody clap because they're good. Have a wonderful week, um, wonderful month. I know I'm going to see some of you at Cameras Don't Take Pictures in London, maybe some of you in Morocco too. But meanwhile, take care, be well, sign up to the newsletter, hit the like button, and I'll see you soon.